everybody. I'll do as best I can. Larry. Hey, Larry, can you start with um, potential on a airline, a airline bailout? How much money is being considered, and where uh, are you at with that? I, I just don't want to be specific. Uh, we're looking at it. it. It's not, you know, it's not so much a bailout. It, airlines are a key channel in the economy. You've got to have it. Uh, point number one. Point number two, this is more, in our view, um, a liquidity help, cash flow help, because again, we see this virus problem as uh, a matter of months, not years. And we don't see the airlines failing. But if they get into a cash crunch, uh, we're going to try to help them. We're consulting with House and the Senate uh, leadership to see what works. And of course, the Treasury Department and the Fed have enormous powers uh, on this. So I, I just I see it as a liquidity fix, uh, not a bailout. It's fifty billion dollars. About yes, right. Yes, sir. Yes, Larry. Would you argue with uh, some of the top economists in the world who are now saying that we're entering a global recession? There's a lot of forecasts out there, and I appreciate that, and respect that. Uh, we are going to be challenged, with no question about it. We are going to be challenged. I've been saying that, and I'll continue to say it. Um, I, I'm not going to label it one thing or another. We just don't know. The models don't know. There's a lot we don't know. First quarter is going to be fine. It's the second quarter. I understand that. It would be a very difficult quarter. But I, I don't need to have labels on this. We'll, we'll take it once. Again, this is the key point that I, if you just allow me a moment. Um, for some reason, some friends of ours have written in, uh, prominent people, that we haven't done anything fiscally. And that's just all the Fed. It's just not true. So, and the president has said in his speech Wednesday night and again on uh, his uh, presser on Friday, I'll say it again. We have roughly $400 billion in, um, I prefer to think of it as fiscal assistance. And one of them is in the bill that got through the House. Obviously, the unpaid sick leave and all that goes with that. That's one. Second one is enormous support for small and medium-sized businesses, uh, which will be made larger because of the declaration of the Emergency uh, Stafford Act, which allows us to draw a lot of funds from FEMA, for example, as well as the SBA. Another is the um, uh, deferral of the income tax for businesses and individuals for three months. That's penalty-free, uh, interest rate penalty-free. Um, that pretty much gets you to 400 billion right there. Look, on top of that, we're deferring the interest on student loans till the end of the year, interest on student loans. I don't have a number estimate on that yet, but that's part of our package. We're buying about $75 million worth of oil uh, to stop the shenanigans from Saudi Arabia and Russia and to protect American oil companies. We're going to do that at the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And on top of that, beg your pardon? What was the number on 75 that? million is the target. And on top of that, I want to remind the, the payroll uh, tax holiday is a serious proposal, a very serious proposal. And we'll be discussing all that uh, with the Senate and House leadership. But that one, you know, to year end uh, provides cash flow and liquidity to both employers and employees. It also has an economic incentive. You'll get to keep more of what you earn. And I think that's great. And, and that thing, as you know, the payroll tax is really directly a middle class tax. It's a blue collar tax, middle class tax, et cetera, et cetera. It's very important. So, and that has, I'm not going to hang a number on that, but it's going to be, all I'm trying to say, and I appreciate your indulgence here, we have an enormous fiscal plan. It's at least $800 billion and maybe more. We're working with Congress to do it, but much of it can be done through executive authorities. And again, to quote the president, uh, we will use whatever federal powers are available. And then I'll just add, and maybe then some. All right, let me just a couple Larry, more and I'll get out of here. Yes, ma'am. Which industries need help when so many businesses are shutting down right now? Well, we're, t uh, we're talking with everybody. You, they're calling in communication lines. You know, one of the th things about this, and it cuts both ways, there's, there's good news and not so good news, is the ability of this administration to work with the private sector. You know, the, the really good news was what the big retailers and drugstores and so forth, how they're going to help us on, on virus testing. 
That's a great example of American free enterprise at work. Um, the bad news is we're going to have to work with them if they have cash flow shortages. But we're in touch with all the groups and their representatives, and we'll be sorting through that. Oh, there are just a couple more. Yes, ma'am. Supply chain in China. I mean, is this, a, is this a death knell for supply chains in China? And you talked about executive action. Isn't that something the president's considering addressing via executive action? Well, I don't want to generalize. I, I, I'll say one thing, and I will speak for myself here, not yet for the president, though I know he's interested in this. We haven't endorsed it yet. If we provided a 100% immediate write-off, Expensing is what it's called, okay? You follow me? It's depreciation. 100% immediate for structures, for equipment, for R&D, for intellectual property. 100%. That would pay for the moving expenses of American companies based in China to come home. Right there, that would pay for their moving expenses. 100% uh, uh, immediate expensing. And Make it permanent. Make it permanent. It'll help everybody. America, it'll help everybody come home. But yeah, we are leery of that. Yes, Claire, Jennifer. Um, have the airlines actually called in and asked for that assistance? You said you've been talking to people. Lots of them. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, so I don't want to tell you what. Asked for some sort of assistance. I don't want to tell you what they're saying. I'm just. We're in touch about their balance sheets and their and their cash flows. Claire, just Claire. a couple more. I want to be fair as I can. Yes, ma'am, please. I have a question. Yes. Have, it's twofold. One is about retirement funds. How would you say to Americans who are worried about their retirement funds and who are even thinking about pulling out their money from their 401ks? And the second thing is, what do you say to Americans who are just simply scared when they're seeing these market drops? <laughs> Those are hard things to opine on, uh, and I don't want to suggest great w wisdom. Look, uh, this market uh, decline is tough. It's very tough. My own view, right or wrong, better or worse, I've always advocated long-term investing for myself, my family, and for everybody. So as I've said before, and others have said this, Mr. Mnuchin said this, um, uh, Warren Buffett has said this, I guess. You know, to me, when you see these big dips, these big drops, they're buying opportunities if you're a long-term investor. And in the long run, just like coming out of the 87, problem, just like coming out of 2008 and 2009, the market came back and, you know, exceeded the record. So I would counsel patience and calmness, and I think long-term investors should have a look at some buying opportunities here. It's the best I can do. I'm not a sage, and I don't have a perfect crystal ball on this thing, but that's my take. Yes, ma'am. Larry, have you talked to the president about this morning's market drop, and how would you characterize his response to that? That's number one. And number two, we've been assured in recent weeks that the fundamentals of the economy are yes. strong. Yes. Do you still believe that? I believe so. Important point, and so is the president. Fundamentals of the economy are strong. In fact, you know, we've had so many business groups, and they'll tell you, you know, through February, January, February, the economy was rising. And the Atlanta Fed GDP now is showing 3% or 3.1%. We don't have the March data in yet. Uh, yes, I believe that. And I, and I think, again, prior policies on ta low taxes and regulations and trade and oil and energy have helped enormously. I believe this is a, a short-term problem. I believe it's a matter of weeks and months. It is not a matter of years. And uh, regarding the president, I was with him this morning. Uh, we had our G7 uh, teleconference meeting. You haven't asked me about that, but um, uh, he was very calm about the market, and um, it is what it is. We think it's going to get better, but that's, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I might add, on the G7 call, it was a fabulous call. We had, um, you know, the U.S. is hosting, so we're the president of the G7 this term. And um, we met with the other leaders, and the degree of cooperation and coordination was fantastic. I mean, everybody basically, and I've seen them around the table a couple of times, not so fantastic coordinated. But today, basically, they all want to do whatever it takes on the health side, solving the virus side, and on the economic side. We just heard that from one president, prime minister after another. And they agreed, by the way, that we will, the leaders will keep meeting regularly. The health ministers and finance ministers will meet on a regular basis. There's enormous coordination 
And the theme, again, is whatever it takes. This was a G7 theme uh, this morning. The president led that conference call. Larry, yes, sir. Larry, you said uh, you were working toward $800 billion in fiscal relief. In is that numbers, right? Yeah. And you've got about half of that so That's far? That's correct. The other half would come mostly through payroll tax cut? That's payroll tax holiday. That's correct. And that holiday would be through the end of the year. And I'm reluctant to price it out. Uh, it won't be less than $400 billion because I don't know the parameters of it and the details, and there's always bickering about uh, cost. But yes, that's our view. And I, I just wanted to make that clear. People may like what we're doing or not, but we have a plan. Some folks have been writing and saying you haven't done anything, and that's just not you, true. Sorry, I'm sorry. You said earlier, did you, were you saying immediate 100% uh, expensing for companies that relo relocate their supply chains away from China? That's one thought. Is that a proposal? That's one thought. It's not formal. It's something we're thinking about. I want to emphasize that. Uh, and it could be more widespread, John. It might, might, might not apply just to folks moving out of China. It may apply to everybody in the economy. I've always believed uh, that 100 percent expensing, whether it's plants, equipments, structures, renovations, I think that's one of the most powerful growth tools we have and also on the corporate tax cut side, which it is the middle class blue collars who benefit the most from that kind of thing. So at the moment, I'm just throwing, I'm tossing it out. It's something we're thinking about. I'm not here to form. President hasn't signed off on it. And so it's just something we're thinking about. Just one more. I don't want to. Yes, Larry, go ahead. Given the, good, good, yes, please. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, given the short term layoffs we're seeing because of the coronavirus, would you consider, would the administration consider sending cash directly to households with some sort of relief? We might, we've got the, you know, in the bill, there are provisions and was also executive authorities for short-term unemployment insurance or compensation. That's a possibility. Uh, we have standby authorities. I say part of the 400 billion I was talking about is emergency authorities. There's FEMA funds, there's treasury funds that could be used in a pinch. So the answer could be yes. I, just, I don't want to be definitive on that. Uh, I'm just trying to be helpful. One more. So one more. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the interest rate cut over the weekend announced, you know, possibly down to zero. Yet today the markets open up, struggling, and it, it, you know the circuit breaker kicks in again. Do you think there was some fear there among investors? Does that, does that look like a desperation move, or what's going on there? I don't know. It's hard to know. Um, as I walked out, the market had come back uh, right. six. six I, what's the ultimate goal of reducing it? I think the Fed is correctly, and I, I want to really support their actions, as the president did uh, last evening, uh, correctly concerned about liquidity and various short-term cash flow issues, exactly the sorts we're talking about here. The Fed has enormous power, enormous power, uh, and it uh, looks like they're going to start using it in connection with the Treasury Department and the president and the executive branch. Uh, so that. The market will react. I can't predict short-term market flows. Uh, I think in the long run it's a buy. Others may disagree. One to more, Jennifer, on, you got to clarify. I got to wait. Um, was there any specific course of action that everyone agreed to, other than just to keep in touch? Well, they all no. I mean, it was yes. Let me rephrase that because every one of those countries is engaging in very heavy monetary assistance and very heavy fiscal assistance whether it's tax cuts or government spending or deregulation or their central banks or the ECB and so forth. Uh, every one of them is doing it. And, and we have a detailed laundry list. I can't go through it now, but they're, they're working hard. And the reason I, I say it is that I've been to a couple of these G7 uh, leaders conferences um, as the American sure, but I, they're not always so agreeable. But they are today, and it was, it was a wonder to see, a wonder to see. And um, I would also say Prime Minister Abe, who is a great leader, mentioned how much he wanted to hold the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. He doesn't know if he can, but he would like to. He believes that that would be a great leadership issue for the whole world. And, uh, and President Trump wished him luck on that. We were all behind him. Uh, on that. Larry, I got to jump. Thanks very much. I appreciate it.